We have decided to go ahead and make an American Bully color video to make it very easy and simple for you to understand. Oh yeah! Hell yeah! Oh yeah! Now mind you, a lot of the information that we're gonna go over is translatable to many bully breeds out there. But this one is strictly specific to American Bullies. All right, before we get started, we have to go over a couple of terms. This way we can understand each other as to what we're talking about. You talking about Willis? The first word up is locus. Locus means location. It's the specific physical location of a gene in a chromosome. In plural, you could say loci or loci. I've heard it both ways. An allele is nothing more than one or two or more versions of a gene. A dog inherits two alleles for each gene, one from each parent. If two alleles are the same, they are referred to as being homozygous. If they are different, then you refer to that as heterozygous. Heterozygous or homozygous. Genotype is the combination of alleles a dog has in a particular loci. Said it again. He said it, don't make him say it or location. Phenotype is the physical appearance that is impacted by the genotype and its environment or a combination thereof. Recessive genes mean that you must have a homozygotic pair, meaning they both have to be the same, in order to be able to express its phenotype. Dominant refers to only needing one of the two genes to be there in order for it to express itself in the phenotype, meaning this guy right here will express without this guy over here being the same as it. Completely dominated by that. One struggling to dominate the other. One won't submit though. You probably have heard the term melanin. I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. But melanin could actually be broken down into two parts. Two parts. Two parts. Two parts. You have the U melanin, where it affects the pigment in the dog's coat, nose, paw pad, and eye color. U melanin produces black or brown color in these areas. However, there are genes that will change the production and structure of the U melanin, and we'll cover that here in a bit. Just know for now that the areas that U melanin actually resides is the coat, nose, paw pads, and eyes. Fio melanin is a reddish to yellow pigment that is produced in the coat. We'll be touching up on pheomelanin once we start hitting the E locus or the E location. We're gonna go ahead and go over the E, K, A, B, and D alleles. Say what? We're also gonna talk about a specific relationship. Relationship? A relationship. Between the K and the A allele. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about which is gonna decide whether your tricolors or tri points or tan points are actually gonna show. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Aren't you getting a little ahead of yourself? Getting ahead of yourself. First and foremost, we gotta hit the E allele. In the E allele, you could have a capital E, lowercase m, capital E, lowercase g, uppercase E, or lowercase e. And it has a hierarchical dominance. At the very top, you have uppercase E, lowercase m, and that stands for melanistic or dark mask. This is dominant to all other E alleles. In our breed, dogs that actually have this melanistic mask, a lot of times are referred to as smut. But these are not the only ones that can show it. You can also have a blue fawn. And that's just where the dog's completely fawn and it's showing a blue melanistic melanistic mask, and that's because the diluted gene is activated. But we'll get into that here in a minute. Next in line is uppercase E, lowercase g for grizzle, and it looks like the Whittle's Peak in the Afghan Wolfhound. In order for this to show, you must have a KYKY KY in the K locus and ATAT -A -T in the A locus. Remember I said earlier, there's a relationship between the A and the K? I remember. I remember. We're just getting into it, but for now, just know for this EG or grizzle to show itself, you must have KYKY in the K locus and ATAT in the A locus. Next up is the capital E allele. And what it does is it provides eumelanin for the rest of the coat, and it is dominant to lowercase e, which is recessive red, and can also be referred to as cream. I'm gonna let you know already. If you have two lowercase e's, it will not show your tricolor. So let's go back to the relationship between the K and the A allele. So dogs that carry two capital E's or a capital E and a lowercase e, they're able to produce black, brown, blue, and Isabella colored dogs. Isabella meaning a diluted brown. However, the distribution of this hair is, is completely dependent completely dependent. completely dependent on the genotypes at the K and A loci or locus or location. Dogs that are lowercase e, e are what we call an R breed cream. Cream is the money, dollar dollar. Now I'm gonna let you know already, cream, cream. pretty much trumps everything. Uh -huh. What it means is the dog can only produce cream colored dogs, doesn't have the ability to produce darker color ones. Much of you are seeing the chart, it's recessive red, so you can't get anything else than a different variation of a cream color. Not happening. 
You could have a darker variation or a lighter a variation. Uh, in fact, that's where the famous champagne color comes from. So let me talk to you about Super K9 Ultimate Mass Gain. Mind you, I only recommend this for dogs that are two years or older. In this particular supplement, you're looking at 75% protein, 20% fat. If you're looking for big, thick, defined muscle, this three pound bag will do it for you. This particular supplement can be added to food or to water. And one more thing, we're gonna go ahead and give you a 15% discount. Oh way. So where do you get it? Well, you turn the bag over and you're gonna see it's the only one that's carrying the QBN logo as well as our platforms. Not to mention the discount code right there, QBNK100. I also recommend you keep these bags because for every five of these bags that you have and you're able to show me with a picture, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a free, 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 free consult. 15 minutes, one-on-one -on -one FaceTime. But if it wasn't enough, we also have a puppy formula called Mother's Milk. It actually includes goat milk as well as green tripe, which from what I hear is almost nowhere to be found. A lot of you have been writing to me about 305. So here's a little secret. This is actually what I'm giving him. Goat milk is pretty much a universal protein for mammals. And green tripe serves as a pre and probiotic, meaning my dog is consuming more of what I'm already feeding. Again, guys, I recommend you save these bags. Once I see you have five of these bags with the QBN logo on them, you're gonna get a free one-on-one 15-minute -on -one FaceTime consult. Don't forget, QBNK100 is the discount code, 15% for you in all of your purchases. Now, let's get back to it. If we move on down to the K allele, you're gonna find that there's only two alleles that we're gonna be talking about. There's only two. Me too. Okay, okay, but only two. In reality, I've spoken in the past about the K, capital B, also about the KY, and also about the KBR, meaning K, locus, brindle. But for all intents and purposes, we're just gonna keep it to the KB and the KY since Embark no longer tests for the KBR. Now, like I just said, on the K locus, the KB is considered to be dominant black. And all that means is it trumps whatever the A locus has to say. Whatever you say. You can have AT, AT, meaning 10 points or try. But if you have a KB in the K locus, it trumps anything that's in the A, meaning it doesn't matter if you have ATAT, -AT, it's not gonna show, at least not in theory. Now, if you have KY, KY in the K allele, what you have going on in the A locus will express, as long as you also don't have two lowercase e's. Remember, like I said, the cream color trumps everything else. Again, this is brief specific to the American bully. What I have found in the A locus is AY, which is equivalent to fawn or slash sable. And AY is dominant to all other alleles. All, all about dominance. Right. Got it. Dominance. The only other one I will talk about here is AT. And AT simply means the 10 points will be expressed. So if you see AY, AT in your A locus, it means the dog is tri-carrier. The dog should not be able to express its tri-coloring because the tri-gene is a recessive gene. It's, a, it's recessive and you need a homozygotic pair. They gotta be identical. You have to have AT, AT. AY, AT is just not gonna cut it. Not gonna cut it. You can breed to a dog that's AY, AT, which is another tri-carrier, or AT, AT, which is a full tri-dog. However, you will not have an entire tri-litter. Those dogs that come out with AY, AT are gonna be carriers, but they're not gonna show it because the AY, which doesn't allow 10 points, trumps AT which actually allows them. So a dog that's A-Y-A-T pretty much is a sable dog. Next up is the B locus. For those of you that like the light colored coats and also the light colored eyes, pay attention. The B locus determines black pigment in the coat, nose, paw pads, and eyes. Now in the B locus, you have two options. You could either have a capital B, which stands for black, or lowercase b, which stands for brown. As you can imagine, black, is a dominant gene, therefore all you need is one capital B in order for that to be expressed. And in brown, you're gonna need two lowercase b's in order for that to be expressed. Now the other locus that interacts directly with the B locus is the D locus. The D locus is gonna determine if you melanin in the coat, nose, paw pads, and eyes will be diluted as the D locus is considered the dilution locus. So what do I mean by that? You tell me. I mean that a dog that's got, say, KB can be diluted to a gray or even a blue and a brown dog to a light fawn. The dilution gene is a recessive gene, meaning you need two lowercase d's identically in order for the dilution to take effect. Whereas if you have a capital D, that means non-dilute. 
it regardless if it's followed by a lowercase d, which would mean a dilution carrier. Dogs with two lowercase d's usually have gray to a light gray nose, and their eyes can range from light brown, yellow, yellow green, or gray. Now in our breed, a bunch of y'all love saying you have a lilac dog, when in reality it's an Isabella. What is Isabella? Isabella is nothing more than having brown, which is represented by two lowercase b's, and a dilution gene, which is your two lowercase d's. When you combine these two, that's how you get Isabella. Holy sh Nike! Guys, if you didn't know, you will now. New Vet and New Joint Plus are the only two multivitamins that we're actually using in our yard. Whether you're feeding raw or you're feeding kibble, I strongly recommend you give New Vet a chance over chicken liver or even beef liver. You already know all the hormones and steroids they feed chicken and cows. Do you really want to be feeding that liver to your dogs? New Joint Plus, DS meaning double strength, is what we use on our dogs to make sure that they have joint support. Now, you guys know I'm a stickler for East, West, High, Rear, and other orthopedic issues. I can tell you we've been written to by many people about New Vet and New Joint Plus. Not just saving them money because their dogs are actually consuming more of the food they eat. Actually correcting non-genetic orthopedic issues that are actually being caused by dietary insufficiencies. That's where this multivitamin and this joint support come in. Now keep in mind this is a 90 day supply and if you put in auto ship we're going to give you 13% discount. We're going to go ahead and give you our order code since you cannot buy this in stores. And we're gonna be leaving a link down below in descriptions. Now let's get back to it. Next up is the S locus, and it controls where pigment is produced in the dog's coat and skin. So the two alleles you have is capital S or lowercase s, lowercase p. The way I like to think of it is, the uppercase S means solid, solid or solid color. And the lowercase SP stands for spotting. So for those of you that are breeding, say for pie bolts, lowercase SP and lowercase SP will give you that pie ball look, which is nothing more than islands of colors. Color. Color. With seas of white. White, 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 white. However, as a carrier, meaning you have an uppercase S and a lowercase S P, you may still get some white patterning. It's not as profuse as if though you had two alleles that were lowercase s, lowercase p. Now, according to Embark, s is not the only variable. What's a variable? That's gonna affect spottings in dogs. And they're currently researching the others. Research. So how do you work this in real time with real dogs? Help me, you have to tell me. Please tell me, please, please tell me, please. Well, let's take our boy 305. We know he's got EMEM, -EM, which shows for a melanistic mask. However, this is very breed specific. It may or may not show in our breed. But I can tell you just looking at 305, he doesn't have a melanistic mask, even though genetically he can. When we come down to his K locus, we see it's KYKY, which opens up everything under the A locus. So we see in the A locus, he has ATAT, -AT, which are the tan points, and we could definitely physically see it on the dog. We then go ahead and take a stroll down to the B locus, and we find he's got two lowercase b's, bringing him in line with brown. However, in the D locus, he has two lowercase d's, which means he has dilution. Therefore, he no longer is a brown dog. He's Isabella with tan points. I know in our community, we refer to this as lilac, but this is not lilac. This is Isabella with tan points. Also, 305 in the S locus has uppercase S, uppercase S, meaning solid, solid. So there's no white coloring, as well as two lowercase m's in the M locus for Merle which means he's not Merle, and two lowercase h's in the H locus, meaning he's not Harlequin. So there is no melanin displacement. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a second dog in order to compare to 305, and we're gonna use our boy Power. If you go to the E locus, you're gonna see he has uppercase E, lowercase m, and it repeats uppercase E, lowercase m, which means he can have a melanistic mask. Next up, we go to his K locus, and we see he has a K, uppercase B, KY, meaning that KB is considered dominant black. And if you notice on the chart, it immediately goes to the B and D locus and bypasses the A. So his B locus is uppercase B, lowercase B, again, meaning dominant black. But his D locus has two lowercase Ds, and thus it dilutes the black to either blue or charcoal. Now, if you notice, based on theory, we should not be able to see tan points on power. Even though on his A locus, he's ATAT, -A -T, it gets bypassed bypassed or trumped by the K capital B. That's your dominant black. That's like painting black over tan points. Black is the dominant color, so it won't let the tan points show. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. That's right. In Power's case, he has dilution on his dominant black, thus the creation of what is called a ghost tribe. Ghost. 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 
Tampa. The Tampa points are making it through not as strong as they would had he not been a black dog or had the KB at the K-Locus. But it's still enough where you can see the shade being there. Like I said, that is referred to as a ghost tribe. You hear that? Try. Now in the S locus, he's uppercase S, uppercase S, which is solid, solid, solid. So there's no white anywhere. In addition, in the M locus, I know we haven't spoken about it, which is for Merle's. He's got two lowercase M's, meaning there is no Merle pattern. And in the H for Harlequin, he's got two lowercase H's, which means no Harlequin. So there is no melanin displacement. None. Not even a little. Now that I've shown you two tri dogs that are actually different in coloration, I'm going to show you their mom who isn't tri and yet was able to produce a tri color dog or a dog with tan points. And this is our girl Aruba. She has an uppercase E, lowercase M, and an uppercase E, lowercase M in the E locus, basically stating that she can have a melanistic mask. But that's something that's not so predominant in our brain. When we go to her K locus, she is K uppercase B, K lowercase Y. And that KB means dominant black, which means it trumps whatever she has going on in the A locus. We take a look at the A locus anyways, and she is A-Y-A-T. And I told you guys earlier, A-Y trumps A-T, so it will not show tricoloration. So in this sense, we could say A-Y is dominant and A-T is recessive, because in order for you to be able to show tri or tan points, it must be AT, AT. They gotta be identical or homozygous. But in this case, you have AY, AT. Because of this AY being dominant, it trumps this AT and it doesn't show tan points anywhere. So we see two lowercase b's in the B locus, which signify for brown, and two lowercase d's in the D locus, which signifies for dilution. We've already spoken that the combination of brown diluted is considered Isabella. That AY in the A locus equals fawn slash sable. And sable is gonna show the pattern from a bird's eye view on top of the dog's back, you can see a cross. Also, Aruba is uppercase S for solid in the S locus. And then next to it, she has a lowercase S, lowercase P for spotting, lending herself to patterns such as piebald, meaning she is a carrier at best. On the M locus, we see two lowercase Ms, meaning she is not Merle. And on the H locus, we have two lowercase Hs, meaning she is not Harlequin. So just looking at this right here and realizing that in her A locus, she's A-Y-A-T. It means that the sire of each one of these two males at minimum had to be either A-Y-A-T tri-carrier or A-T-A-T full-blown tri. Let me show you what that looks like on the pundit square. So at the very top, we're gonna go ahead and place Aruba. We already know she's A-Y-A-T, meaning tri-carrier. On the side, we're gonna place X-Sire, and we're gonna say he's also a tri-carrier. A-Y on top, A-T on the bottom. So now we're gonna come across and match up the alleles. We're gonna match up the sire's A-Y allele with the dam's A-Y allele, and you get a Y A Y. Next up, we're gonna match his A Y allele with her A T allele, and you're gonna get A Y A T. We're then gonna do the same at the bottom. We're gonna match up his A T allele with her A Y allele, and we're gonna have A Y A T. Lastly, we're gonna go ahead and match up his A T allele with her A T allele, and you have A T A T. If you notice, AYAY equals 25% of the squares. AYAT equals 50% of the squares. And ATAT equals 25% of the squares. These are the percentages of the possibilities of a tri-carrier being bred to another tri-carrier, where you're gonna have 25% of the pups that are not gonna be tri-carriers at all. You're gonna have 50% of the pups that are, are gonna be tri-carriers. And now you're gonna have 25% of the pups that are gonna be full tries. Now, it's really important you realize that genetics is based on probability. Does this mean that out of a four pup litter, we're for sure gonna have one puppy that's gonna be A-Y-A-Y, two puppies that are gonna be A-Y-A-T, and one pup that's gonna be A-T-A-T? -A -T? No, there is no 100% guarantee. Hell no. Hell no. Of course not. But going into it, these are the possibilities. Now, let's go ahead and run a pundit square with a tri-carrier and a full tri. So let's go ahead and leave Aruba up there with her A-Y-A-T, and let's bring in Sire Y. He's A-T-A-T. -A -T. We're gonna go ahead and match up his A-T with her A-Y, and you get A-Y-A-T. We're then gonna match up his A-T with her A-T, 
and you're gonna get AT, AT. Then again, we're gonna match up his AT with her AY, and we're gonna have AY, AT. And we're gonna match up his AT with her AT, and we're gonna have AT, AT. So now the possibilities are right there in front of you. Two out of the four squares signify they are AY, AT, meaning 50% will be tri-carriers. The other two squares are ATAT, meaning they're full tries, which tells you that a combination of a tri-carrier, in this case Aruba, and a full try, in this case Sire Y, is gonna yield you 50% of the litter to be AYAT, or tri-carriers, and the other 50% will be ATAT, meaning full tries. Notice, in this particular scenario, we did not have any squares that represented AYAY, -A -Y, discarding that possibility from even happening.